are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. No. Where did we leave off? Ah, yes. Our hero's path came to a clearing filled with flowers, which Alward immediately distrusted. Splitting the timeline to safely investigate them, he discovered that the flowers weren't normal. As the timelines split apart, Uver and Zephyr both had vague memories of the Doom timeline and strangely noticed out-of-place baying of hounds in the distance. All right. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to us. It is time for another Two Truths Seven. and a Lie with Abby. Wow. Give me a minute. I was about to, find to start the something. maestro and um, get everything going. We'll add in the maestro later. <laughs> That's music. That's such a pain. <laughs> Two truths and a false. What pulse? are you doing on my set? <laughs> I'm the host. That's a lot of pain. Right, Abby, ready? I am ready. Okay. Welcome back to Two Truths and a False. Woo! The host changed, and it's. Yay. She has a much more pleasant voice. I was going to say, it's a lot less aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode. <laughs> Three, bio- three more biology facts that may or may not be true. Biology. Can you figure them out? Science. Science. I love. I, I love science. Okay. Yeah. So, write down your guesses. Write down your guesses, people. Okay. I haven't heard the question. Yet. All right. Let's Number go. one. Male fence lizards have a bright red chin. Number two. Newts have a terrestrial stage. And number three, cedars in the States are actually junipers. Are we picking out the lie? Yes. Okay. Oh, Oh, no. No. Um. (laughs) Have I actually stumped you guys? See, what's fun is that I'm not 100% on any of these, so I just have to choose whichever one seems the least. Can I I request... Um, oh gosh! Have I stumped you? Can I request a definition just so I can make sure I understand? Mm-hmm. Terrestrial stage is that on like land? Like on land? Okay. okay. Yes. It's the stage at which the extraterrestrials get out because they're afraid of being consumed. Callbacks. I gotta add that to my list. Yeah, I'm, I, I gotta go with what I got. All right. Yeah, I'm getting. Who's that ready? All Those right. just you two. I like that I've actually stumped people. This makes me happy. It's not very hard with me. All right. <laughs> Shall you say it again and then we'll okay. go around the table? Is everyone ready, first of all? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Woo! All right. So those options again were male fence lizards have a bright red chin. Cedars in the United States are actually juniper trees. And newts have a terrestrial stage. You oh. reordered those. I thought okay. you did. I did? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the same option. was number two last time. What? Newts was number two last mm-hmm. time. It doesn't matter. It does, it does matter because I wrote, I wrote numbers. numbers. Oh, it you can change it now. It literally doesn't matter. Okay, so gonna... one is the the chin. Yeah. Two is now cedars are junipers. Okay. And three is newts have a terrestrial stage. Okay. Dang it. Okay. 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 Sorry, I didn't think I reordered them. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not going to win. What, what do you got? Number one. I choose one. Okay. Oh, are we going around? Yeah. My way? Your okay, turn. I chose... Two? Do we need to um, explain? No. I wrote trees under it because I just yeah, wanted to make sure yeah. that mm. you knew which one I got. Uh, I, I wrote. I wrote one. Okay. Also the trees. Number two. See. I Same. went two as well. Wow. Trees. Uh, so I think it's not the tree one, and I could be ro- misremembering. My wife has recently gotten into this tree podcast, and they talked about What's something with the furs. Uh, what I what I want my answer to be is the is the newts. Oh, you're right. Oh well, my answer that I wanted was the newts, mm. but I picked the seat. I miss. Okay. I miss. Yeah. I hope it's the newts. Right, what okay. is it, Abby? So. Oh wait, you at home? Let us know your answer. <laughs> I'm gonna. No, I can't. 
So two of you were correct. Ooh. And that would be oh, Jordy and, and Jenkins. Yep. Hey! So male fence lizards, they actually have a bright blue chin. Oh. Not I red. googled it already. It was very, very close. There you go. Um, newts do have a terrestrial stage um, as a juvenile. I thought so. And then they, That's they, why they I have an pick it. they have an aquatic adult stage. I knew that. I, and their their terrestrial stage mm. is called the red eft stage. So they're mm. very bright orange red. I like. I should have known the cedar one was. I <laughs> like newts and frogs right. and such. Okay. That's why I wanted it to be the correct answer, yeah. so there was more representation. I was <laughs> bouncing back and forth between the the newt one and the. The lizard one, because mm. I was like, I don't remember if newts and salamanders are different. And I don't they remember they like, are different. if they have similar life cycles. All right, everyone. Um, sort of ish. Um, uh, salamanders are amphibians. Mm. So, they so cedars are junipers. Cedars, yep. cedars in the United States pe- specifically are junipers. Wait. So in the Bible, whenever you see like a cedar tree, it's actually a cedar tree. But whenever they came over to the New World, it looked similar enough mm-hmm. That they just called them cedar trees, but they are juniors. I understood that one backwards when yeah. I answered. I understood that question backwards. Mm. That's too bad. All right. Well, everyone, thank <laughs> you for joining us for another night of Junior's in I hope you all have a great day. Woo! Wow! Biology. Yeah. Speaking of biology, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Albert and Uver are about to dig into some botany on this flower that Albert was investigating. Yeah. That was a good one. Alward, at first glance, this seemed to be a field of lavenders, but as you look closer, you realized this isn't lavender, and in fact, you've never seen this flower before in your life. And you've read a lot of books. Are you telling me I'm not allowed to make a nature check, or...? Would you like to make a nature check? <laughs> I mean, I would, but I, I've never seen this flower before in my life. Rolls a natural 20. <laughs> you still you've never know. seen it in person. Okay. You've never seen any pictures of it photographs even what about me <laughs> yeah so uh alward uver anybody who's interested can roll a nature check i'm presuming that alward is sharing information can mm-hmm. i use the one terrain since the grunger forest is yes you can use your forest can i use boneyard music or psychopomp lore no is this an accounting <laughs> check <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna count all the flowers <laughs> yes can i use gossip lore yes what Gossip like lore is a special lore. lore. Oh, right. Sorry. Actually, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree. I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I rolled a 20 on my nature check, but can I um, use my eye for numbers feet just to take a guess at how many flowers there are in this field? <laughs> many flowers. <laughs> I can, I can I get, see the I, flowers. No, I get a specific. I get a, spell, I get a number the, range. The spell breaks. There's too many. <laughs> Say at least a hundred. I, I would know the general amount. Oh no! Golly. That's so Furious. mean. Furiously typing. I, I gotta go count it is, some flowers. But it is specifically <laughs> hours. Jordy's gone for two hours. All right. Just well, that was the flowers. end of the episode. We'll see you guys next Wait, time. Wait, did I actually count that one? Oh no. <laughs> Again, it is just general. There's a Mario Party game like this. <laughs> I, I think I know what you're doing. He's mathing. I think there's like two. <laughs> there's at least two. He's Not doing, including the one I plucked. He's doing the thing where you count the jelly beans in the jar to win a prize. Yeah, but with flowers. No, I'm just straight up mathing. Oh, uh, well, that is math. That is math. He's got those equations flying by his head. <laughs> you count X and Y, and he then you the multiply. Right now. What's that but look like? Z? It looks like whenever <laughs> Alward unleashes his psyche. I don't know what that looks like either. Well, just picture it. Well, maybe you should get rid of your synesthesia. That's what, okay. that's what, that's what, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Just over four and a half million flowers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my god! I, I casually mentioned is that. that that's a good meal. So many flowers. It's about flowers. 80 feet across and 60 feet wide. Did you say 400 million? Okay. Four and a half million. Four and a half. I, ju- I will just casually mention that to Uver as... <laughs> um... As for the results of my role, because I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> You're welcome. 26. Okay, oh, you I, got a 26 on forest. I also got a 26. I got a 23 on gossip lore. Okay. <laughs> you all three are confident that this is not a real flower. What? Like, in, tagging on to Alward being like, I've never seen this before. You guys... You know, perusing through your knowledge of botany in the local areas, wildlife and plants and everything, it's like there's no known record of this flower. 
Is it cardboard? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. There. It's cake. <gasps> I eat it. Wow, I'm impressed. I was going to ask if I could eat it because I rolled a five and I got a plus one on nature. <laughs> I mean, you're free to eat it if you want to. Can I lick it? Don't. I want to lick the one that's you in You might hand. die. Uver does two things before you do that. Clock again. One, he casts detect magic. On the flowers? Yes. Yes. Okay, there's magic. <laughs> Didn't detect magic also change? I think if you cast it at a higher level, it does something else. That may have been the change. Oh, yeah. Uh, heightened third, I learned the rank. You are third I level. I am third spell. level, yeah. So uh, rank or level of the most powerful magic effect the spell detects. A left. Third. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, huh. interesting. Okay, so it's the third level. Is this like hallucinatory terrain? Uh, the second, he's going to use the staff and cast read Aura, the librarian mm-hmm. staff. I focus on the ob- target object, opening my mind to perceive magical auras. When the casting is complete, I know whether the item is magical. I already know that. Um, you or anyone you advise about the aura gains a plus two circumstance bonus to identify the magic item. If the object is illusory, illusory, you detect this only if the effect's rank is lower than the rank of your read aura spell, which is third. So, so go ahead and make a nature check to identify nature to identify magic. The skill is dependent on the source of the magic. Can I still use my terrain more? No, not in this case. Dang it. If it was a hallucination, we'd probably be making will saves, or Jordy mm-hmm. would be making will saves for us. Who's to say? That's true. He could be sneakily doing it. He doesn't know my will save. And read I... aura. Is that still a oh, 10 minute activity? Oh, man. Yes, yeah, that, that is a st- still activity. Um... I don't know. Let me double check that, actually, because I need to look at that stuff. Uh, it's a one-minute activity. It is. So, yeah. Zephyr, while Uver is focusing and trying to read the aura of these flowers, are you licking or eating or otherwise interacting with one? See, if we had removed the context from that, that would have been a weird question. <laughs> Before you answer, I can't turn back the time. I'd like to smell it. Okay. Make a will saving throw. 26. It smells nice. It's a very relaxing scent. It smells like lavender. Uh, you, it's, you just kind of feel vaguely relaxed. Oh, gosh. I don't know anything about flowers, but that's pretty relaxing. I have a theory. I think we could hold on to a couple of those. It might make... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, then. No. Um, we should... Go around the field, yeah? Oh, so Perhaps you should wait until I finish identifying this. Stop talking and identify it. It takes time. And as that time is concluding, Uver, you are able to identify a latent trace of a sleep spell in the flower you're focusing on. Cool. Dang, that would have been useful before I smelled it. <laughs> That's why it happened. Before. As for the identification rule, does an at 20 do anything? Oh. Oh. It better. Well, so then, um, I somehow skipped past the part where I asked you what your role was, and I just gave you the answer. Beautiful. <laughs> that gummit. When I was like, yeah, this has got latent sleep in it. I was like, yeah, of course he's going to make this roll. I don't need to check. Um, let's see if I can get you any additional context on the nat 20, though. Um, so focusing on a single flower, you're able to sense it's got like a weak. Ten. I can do 10. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> Focusing on a single flower with your spell, or your read aura, you're able to tell that it has individually a very weak version of a sleep spell. But as you expand that focus to more, including more, you realize that the higher the concentration in the vicinity, the more powerful the effect will be. Huh. So actually reading 10 makes a difference. Mm-hmm. I knew it. So can we just go around now? At white birth. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, In yes? fact, I'm kind of surprised we're not feeling the effects now at the edge. You feel relaxed here at the edge. <laughs> Nero seems itching to say something. Oh, no. What if I just want a nap? That is... Can I go in there? That is the danger of this field. But I want a nap. There's no guarantee he'll wake up. I'm so tired. We just woke up like two hours ago. Yeah, and then we fought a, a, a linoleum. Are you sure you're just not hungry? This no, I'm tired. <laughs> this hey, area uh, is not just a field. It is a trap. 
Howard, I don't know a lot about people, but you don't ask women if they're hungry. I didn't ask, I presumed, but thank you for the That's knowledge. That's not even any better. <laughs> it's all right, Neros. You don't need to sleep. We can keep going. I'll help you out. Okay. This, this area is a hunting ground of some sort. We need to leave. Now. Fine, 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 fine. So are you just retracing your steps and following the footsteps back the way you came? Going around. Going around. So you're leaving the footsteps behind and striking off into the woods. Well, we saw the footsteps go through the thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we can just go around to get to the other side where the footsteps went. Oh, no. Oh. 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 (laughs) Oh, because the forest moves. We would have to stay on the edge of the field, which could be dangerous. We could just hold our breath. Dangerous going through the field. Oh, yeah, that is true. We could... Well, unless it's not a breath effect. It's a spell, not a breath. I, I think smell it. What? Hold on. Is that Would that work? I have an idea to test it, if that's okay. <laughs> well, I rolled an add 20. I, I know, but you know it's a spell effect, but we don't know how the spell affects. If that makes sense? Uh, or unless Jordy's okay with I that? I mean, if you've got a cool flavorful way to get some more information, I was just going to tie a rope to myself. <laughs> And then go into the field and have them drag me back out if I fall asleep. I volunteered to take a nap. That is true. She true. did. You could send me. Okay, so just two eight. birds, a, one stone. A mechanical interjection. Should you enter the field, it will not be simple will saves. What we'll be doing instead is borrowing from 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons the oh. idea of a skill challenge. Oh. Mm. So there's a DC to resist the effect of the field. But I'm not telling you what you're going to roll. You tell me what you're doing and why that justifies what you want to roll. My accounting lore finally comes in. Like you could say, I'm going to focus on, you know, accounting and numbers to keep my mind alert. Oh. I'm rolling accounting. Yeah, lore. that's that. So we that's could what I was we do. could tie all of this off with ropes so that if whoever makes it across can just tr- pull the others through. Is it an air effect? I think the mo- the best way to handle that would be to say. If you are not breathing it in, it helps to weaken the effect of the spell. It doesn't completely make you immune, but then you could make a fortitude save to resist the effect of the spell by holding your breath. Well, could you use like athletics? Is that is yeah. a skill, part of the skill challenge to do that same thing? Yeah. So essentially what it comes down to is there's a DC and you have to make enough successes before you get right. enough failures. So holding, and that counts as crossing. Holding your breath can be what you're focused on so you don't fall asleep. Yes. Until you, you do it too long and pass out. Yeah. <laughs> If, and you can't roll the same skill twice. Uh, how many how many rolls is needed? Do we know? No. Okay. So if you get enough successes, you've successfully crossed. If you get uh, too many failures, you have failed to cross. Well, that sounds fun. Nero okay. will think about napping so hard she won't fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I role play telling that if sure. we're going to cross? Yeah. Okay. It would not be wise to leave the trail. There is no guarantee that we would be able to find our way back. It looks like the only way through this field is if we steal ourselves and we cannot fall asleep. All right. Um, I can think hard. Um, should we tie each other up in case we do <laughs> fall asleep? <laughs> Did you say that? Did I miss that? We could try. That way, if one fails, we can perhaps get some out. Yeah, we have plenty of rope. If you can avoid breathing in the fumes, it might help weaken the effect. I'm pretty good at holding my breath. I have shenanigans. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And I need you to let me know if my shenanigans function based off of the floating disc spell. Because I want to move. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. If I were to cast Levitate on myself, mm-hmm. and then I grab the floating disc. We can push him. Yeah, you can, oh, yeah, you can just push me. Yeah. Just go, Alex. <laughs> He's surfing. So I would say that that wouldn't work as intended, because the floating disc specifically tries to avoid using it to carry creatures. I think that levitating and then trying to anchor yourself to it would have a similar effect. However... You could still levitate, and I could lift you up above me because I'm like six foot something, and I could just chuck you. <laughs> I mean, this... I'm down for this. <laughs> Are we doing a fastball special? We're doing a fastball special. It's a level three spell. 
I'm so down. <laughs> Do you just move until you hit something? Uh, you, um, I am allowed to sustain the spell to move up or down. It doesn't say anything specifically about moving. I don't think that's how that's intended to work, like as a zero gravity, which would do what you're imagining. Actually, it would let all of you do that. And what does levitate do? It lets you literally just hover up or hover down. Oh, but not side to side? No. So Uh, say you don't have a ladder. So you wouldn't be able to throw, but I would allow dragging. (laughs) That doesn't help me. I'm not wasting a spell for that. Yeah, okay. Darn. Okay. I have shenanigans. Oh, no. Okay. Yes. Mine will work, though. Oh. 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 So oh. confident. I'm going to force his not to work. Oh. You can't do anything with it. You don't know that. You got a counterspell? <laughs> you don't know what I have. The confidence in <laughs> this right, man so right now. So what's the shenanigans? I'm casting air bubble. Okay. We don't I, know if that functions. I did ask if someone had air bubble. With that one, that would be just he's spending a spell to automatically succeed on holding his breath. And I would say, okay, that's one success. Yeah, just want, it's, it's, it's the same as any other skill check. Yeah. All right, so are you guys tying each other on ropes, or how are you doing that? I think that's a good idea, actually. Just a chain of people. So Sigurd has a plus three strength. Okay. <laughs> what, so where she are you could going? drag people on with the rope. I will allow Sigurd to drag creatures that she could carry, which in this case would be Cornelius or... Um, Zephyr. Okay. I was thinking of having her try to drag Neros if Neros falls asleep, just Actually, kind of dragging her. Oh, just drag, drag? Yeah, drag. Yeah. Okay. Um, the dragging rules, as stated, is you treat bulk as one half. Yeah. I, I understand what you mean by literally drag. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I thought you meant like so, kite through the air kind of drag. No, I was thinking like we could be roped off to her so she could like drag us if we fall asleep. But she wouldn't be able to drag everyone. <laughs> Just Neros. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neros is already thinking of sleeping, so yeah. I'm worried she's going to fail. I mean, that's valid. Do you want coffee? How so about... If I brew coffee, so fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so how about I tie off the three l- lightest people to Sigurd? Cornelius, Zephyr, and Neros. Presumptuous. Probably correct, but presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. That And then the rest, the three of us, Uver, Alward, and... Val can be tied off together so we can drag each other if something happens. All right, so we've got three separate rope chains with Uver, Albert, Val, and then Neros, Zephyr, Cornelius, which is tied to Sigurd. Yeah, do we need a connecting tie to the two groups? Probably not. So if one group completely fails, we can drag them out. Yeah. I mean, it might not be a bad idea. Is that okay, Jordy? Yeah, you can have a rope between two. Okay, so we'll have the groups tied off to you. So like if the one group fail it fully falls asleep, the other group could drag them off. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Because if not, they're just in the field so sleeping. So Sig- will kind of just circle around close enough to you guys so she doesn't pull on you unless you fall asleep. Then she'll start pulling on the rope. Cool. All right. All right. That's good. Any other further prep before you head in? So I would like to... Shenan again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and see what kind of tool I can pull out of my cloak. Not sure what could be super useful in this case. One Potentially. Of those, one of those little bamboo straws? Well, see, I was thinking along the lines of a mask or a, a red balloon. globe. Not a globe. A helmet. A. Uh, I feel like this could be useful, but I don't know what to use. Oh, actually, Sophia, before we do all the tying off, can I have Sigurn just fly Zephyr and Cornelius across? Because they can ride on her. She can carry them directly. Yeah, she would have to do them one at a time, but yeah. yes. You want Sigurn can just pick you up and drop you on the other side. You don't even have to do anything. Because you're small. I think Zephyr wants to do something. But my, my shenanigans. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say while it's not impossible for you to acquire a filter mask, I think that would be too complex for you to pull out of your cloak. Then in that case, I would like to pull out just a regular face mask, put it on my face, and then have Sigrun fly me over. Okay. <laughs> so before... 
the rest of the party proceeds across the flower patch, Sigurn, fairies, Zephyr, and Cornelius across. And then are we having Neros tied on with the rest of the group, or are we just having Sigurn tied to Neros? Also, may I hold on to the end of the rope that uh, individu- or ends up getting tied to them oh. as we fly over? We, how about we have the group tied off to each other and Sigurn? But Sigurn might not be able to drag them, but could pull the rope over to Zephyr, so Zephyr could drag if need be. Yeah, that works for me. All right. Now the fun begins. How long did you say this was? Uh, the the distance across? Yeah. 80 feet. I'm so glad I don't have to do anything now. So, <laughs> so do, do we just pick skills and go? Let's just do a quick little initiative roll to see who goes in which order. Because then if somebody starts falling asleep, somebody might want to react to that. Oh my goodness, he's falling asleep. Can I use my um, nature check that I used on the flowers for initiative? Sure. So that's 26. Uh, 26. <laughs> 24. 22. All right. Look at us. All even numbers. Again. We have to tie rope to rope. We're we even have 50 now. feet. Should I roll, actually? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. So we know where you fall in the initiative as you're observing their crossing. What about Cornelius? Oh, Cornelius, you're watching us die. <laughs> Cornelius got 25. I mean, uh, out of all the times to roll that, not bad. It's pretty good, pretty good. Technically, it would have ended up being a 10, fully, but I rolled a natural one <laughs> over here. Yeah, good time to get that used up. Zephyr is thinking about how much initiative he has for this scenario and decides to go to sleep. <laughs> he he well, shoves his I head in do. the flowers and then just falls back. He's take, Why can't I take a nap? He's taking a nap. I'll, well, I'll make coffee later. It's fine. I'm already on the other side, so I can take a nap. You know, Once so you get there, you can nap. We have to get across the flowers first. Those are, it's a dangerous nap. <laughs> and then I'll cast Levitate on you, and you can nap in the sky while we drag you. <laughs> All right, between Uver and Val, who's going to go first? Uver can go first. Okay. All right, Uver, what is the first thing you do as you begin to walk across this field of fake lavenders and you feel the drowsiness of the sleep setting in? What is the first thing you do? I cast air bubble. All right, and that counts as your first success. Val. I'm using athletics to hold my breath because that's what it sounded like I should do. All right, go ahead and roll for it. 34. All right. That is a success. Cool. I should clarify. Uh, because of the nature of the skill challenge. There are no crit successes. Yeah. The, there could be a way to develop that. But we're not doing that. Right but we're now. not doing that. It's it's too complex for the situation at hand. All right. Neros. I sing to keep myself awake. Nice. And what are you rolling for that? I have no idea. I would suggest a performance. performance. <laughs> Survival. Gossip lore. Gossip lore. You sing about some hot tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll a performance. Ooh. Uh, 23. And that's a success. Alward? So I have some shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> so, Again? Yeah, I didn't realize this. I'm and still a level three spell. So I have the capabilities of casting a spell and moving 70 feet. Jeez. Wait, is it more than that? Let me double check. Let me double check. You're tied to us. 70 feet. <laughs> it's a long rope. I would have mentioned this beforehand. <laughs> okay. We can get him on 100 um, feet. And it's not a skill check. And technically speaking, all time is stopped when I'm doing this. What is the spell? Time uh, jump. Oh. I believe. Let me double check the name. You know, doing more time stuff than the other two are time things. I don't know about that. Yeah, time jump. It specifically says I get to make two actions, which must be used to leap, stand, step, or stride. Uh, I can use the appropriate speed as necessary, fly, crawl, climb. While you take these actions, time pauses. All other creatures are completely unaware of your actions, cannot speak, and can't use any actions that would trigger your movement. While you are taking these actions, you can't use any other action, including then that would trigger by the move actions. And then once you're completely done, time uh, starts again and onlurkers seem to I it seems like I've suddenly teleported and I leap forward through time is disorientating so I can't do it again within one minute of using the spell or I become stupefied for for one minute 
I'll say, given the effects of that spell and the way that it should interact with the world, if you use that, it'll count as two successes just because you will have covered so much of the field okay. that like, it doesn't have enough time to continue affecting you. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. Uh, Zephyr, would you like to do anything? Not yet. All right. Am I able to hold a turn? Yeah. yeah. Delay. So you can delay, delay. And jump in whenever. All right. Uber, you're about a third of the way across the field. I'll make the argument my spell lasts for a minute. So... Your spell is going to count as the one success because it's blocking out any olfactory inge- interference that you might be mm-hmm. <laughs> encountering. Why did that sentence come out the way that it did? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just rolling with it. <laughs> your your air bubble is counting as a um, unquestionable you are holding your breath as you cross the field, but it's not going to protect you from the entirety of the effects of the flowers. So gotcha. that's why it's getting you one success, which is the same as, you know, um, Val holding her breath. Hmm. What's Uber going to do? Because he doesn't have to hold his breath. You can join me singing. What'd you use? Performance. <laughs> yeah, not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a detriment to um, my role. <laughs> you have good nature? I have great nature. Uh, is your arcana better? My arcana is heck of a lot better. You can, like, um, be thinking about how one would implant this spell onto a patch of flowers. Oh. Or if it's, like, something naturally point. the I flowers could, do. I could be trying to unravel the spell as we're walking through. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Go ahead and make an arcana check. 30. That's nice. a success. Wowzers. And Val. I'm going to join in singing and use my music lore. <laughs> nice. Nice. 24. Nice. That's a success. Zephyr is singing from the sidelines as well to try to <laughs> keep us awake. And Nero's. Keep up the energy. I'm going to keep on singing. So you can't do the same I thing twice. I can't do the same thing twice. Yeah. Can I start holding my breath since she started singing? Yes. We pass, we pass <laughs> the song across. What was the holding breath thing? I use it athletics, athletics. but you could probably do something else. Hmm. Athletics um, and fortitude are the th- two things that make sense to me. I'll use fortitude. How fortitude is? Ooh. 20 f- 25. And that's a success. And Alward? Uh, since I'm so close to the end, I think I'm just going to hold my... No, well, what was holding breath? Athletics or fortitude? Do Ooh. cartwheels. Do cartwheels. Uh, I count. think just since I'm so hard. close to the end, I think what Alward's going to do is use his society... Uh, or, well, yeah, because society is how I get the number thing. Uh, so and I, he's just going to start counting to get, like, a more specific amount of flowers. <laughs> and that's your accounting lore? Uh, I mean, it could be if it makes the DC easier. If not, I would prefer society. Cause, okay. Yeah, yeah, society works. That's, oh, um, uh, 32. Ooh. And you finish counting the... Four million five hundred seventy fourth flower. Oh, sorry, four million five hundred seventy four thousandth flower. As you step out of the patch and join Zephyr on the other side, I gotta know how you did that math. Later, I also want to know how you have exactly four thousand and not a random hundred number. No, so I didn't count every flower. I just got closer to what my approximation gave me. Ah. All right, so. Alward and Zephyr are across the patch. The rest of you are about two-thirds of the way, and it is now Uver's turn. Zephyr gives him a fist bump as he crosses the line. My mage hand fist bumps him back. Oh, I should do that. Telekinetic hand. My telekinetic hand fist bumps Alward's telekinetic hand as he crosses the line. <laughs> After Uver uh, thinks through how you could imbue a spell into these plants, he's next going to start thinking of all the... Uh, races and creatures that would be immune to this spell using society. Sure. Yeah. Give me a society check. Nerd. 28. All right. Uver steps over the threshold and is across the patch. Val. I'm going to intimidate the flowers. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at that. Uh, she's going to use her boneyard lore. She's going to start focusing on the things that she's trying to plan for. For the ritual. 
that she wants to do soon. All right. 30. And Val steps over the threshold. We got some high rolls for this. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's down to Neros as she is nearing the edge of this patch of flowers. Um, I'm just going to start talking about things that I have heard in town. S- spreading the tea, as it were, using my gossip lore. <laughs> Try- right. Just trying to keep my mind off the fact that I want to take a nap. Oh. 16. And as Neros <laughs> approaches the edge of the flower field, she's talking about the gossip and stuff that she heard in the town on your way in. And then she kind of just trails off and then just sits down and then lays down. You know, I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Um, Neros, Neros, wake up. Are we out? Yes, everybody um, else is out of the patch. Let's pull. Start pulling. Hold on. Yeah. On the count of three. I want pull. to pull myself. Oh, okay. Zafir ignores you. <laughs> no, he just pulls. Well, technically, we're in turn order, so yeah. he can do. True. Zafir has been holding an action. <laughs> True. Okay. I've held every action I have. All right, go, go, Zafir. I believe in you. <laughs> what did you roll? Is that another one? That we rolled one so many that times. That face was okay. not. Okay, so I rolled a three, oh. but Yay. that brings me up to 16. So, Zafir, you get a good hold on that rope and you start to pull and you're thinking this shouldn't be too hard, but like there's not really any give and it doesn't even look like Neros is starting to like rock in your direction. Like she's not pulling at all. Oh, I don't like that. I just, I just yell out. What? Neros, drop one of your bottles. I know that's <laughs> hard, but just I, I need it lighter. How far away is Neros from me? About 20 feet. And I'm stuck here. I would like to amp my telekinetic hand to shove Nero's closer to us. Ooh. She's pushing, she ragdolls. So She's I would attack its shove check against their fortitude DC instead of an athletics check uh, in the direction of my choice using a spell attack roll. So what's your fortitude DC? Well, I'm asleep, so... <laughs> Do I get any bonuses? <laughs> hmm. In this situation, let's roll it flat. Actually, you can't like, like allies. allies is no penalty because allies can choose to f- just, just fail just that oh. stuff, right? So if she's asleep. If I'm asleep, I could, as a fail. Yeah, just choose to not. I'm curious. Yeah, though. go ahead and roll. Great. I'm curious, Abby. Does uh, Nero s- usually sleep on her back or her face or her side? Uh, she's probably a stomach uh, sleeper. That was twenty-seven. So kind of you her amp face. your telekinetic hand, and you be try to shove Nero's towards the group, and for. A second, you're experiencing the same thing that Zephyr was experiencing when he started pulling. And I'm assuming Zephyr is still pulling on the rope. Oh, yeah. And, like, Z- Neros isn't moving anywhere. And then you hear a sound of, like, pulling weeds. And Neros starts moving again and is bringing a bunch of flowers with her as you drag her out of the patch. We need to get her out of there now. Oh! Is she still in, is she still in there just a little ways? Uh, no, at this point, between the telekinetic hands and the rope, now she's pulling easily and you're able to pull her back out. Uh, Oh, okay, thank goodness. As you pull Neros clear of the flowers, it looks like all of the flowers, as soon as Neros laid down, started like ivy style, just climbing and growing and wrapping around her. Jumanji, baby. I'll just pull all that off of her What we dragged along. Am I still asleep? You can sleep as long as you want at this point. Okay, (laughs) cool. Is this the second time Alward's died? In an alternate timeline, maybe. maybe. I don't like that. Knowing like that knowing Nero's really wanted a nap, I'll just carry her and let her sleep a little Aww. longer. <laughs> you're so sweet. Uh, Uver just whispers uh, more more to himself. It was a hunting ground. Zephyr uses prestidigitation to clean off your face as we just drug your face through the dirt. <laughs> I did. I did, ro- I did it's, 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 he felt quite bad about it. He was like, "Well, I tried to help." But, uh. It's like a Castrovelian fly trap. So, were, were those plants the monster? <laughs> the forest. The forest has a mind of its own. It, it wants to as eat do us. the plants in sight. Not everything is as as it seems. I thought we had an agreement. We have an agreement with some. The forest has a mind of its own. After that ordeal, I'm going to cast Time Sense. 
had to say that. I did. I was just sitting here like, how much time has passed? What time was it when we started the fight with the widow? What day is it? I also gave a sniff in the air. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting Nero snap. Of course. Nero so deserves a nap. So does Val. Val th- kind of deserves a so nap more. So does Zephyr. No. Zephyr got a free ride. With your time sense, Alward, you know that it is 524 and three quarters of a second. You have roughly two hours before it'll be too dark to continue doing anything, and you'll need to have camp set up by that time. Maybe away from the flower patch. Oh, 100% away from the flower patch. Works for me. So I guess we continue to follow the trail for the next two hours, and if we don't stumble upon anything, we make camp. Say next hour. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to get too close to them. Mm -hmm. So you continue pressing along that trail, and... You begin to find other footprints that will come alongside and like the, the the trail that you're following seems less now like it's journeying and more like it'll walk somewhere and then come back and go forward again. Then it'll walk off a little bit and then come back and move forward again. Uh, who is doing the tracking? I have a nine. I don't think I'm the highest. I think Uber has the It's most. Uber. All right, Uber, give me a survival check. Can I aid? Yes. Does he get the plus one from the map or no? Not for this one. He gets a plus one from me. Nice. What? He's making a face. You have a hero point. (laughs) You do have a hero point. Sven. Sven, we may need this. I've been rolling so well. I see. Nice. Would you clue us in? Sure. What's 20 minus 19? Is this a trick question? No. <laughs> that took me a minute. <laughs> I thought I thought you were telling us the total of your roll, like, with all of your modifier. And I was like, how is that possible? I was so, trying to figure out how you have a minus 19 mod. <laughs> Same. So I you don't both. have a minus 19 so you got modifier. A, so you got a natural one. I got a natural one, which with survival is 13. Plus, plus one. With a plus one. Okay. So do you want to re-roll that, or do you want to just eat the time loss? We can eat the time loss. Before, I would. S- well, critical fail is concerning because it is a moving forest. Mm-hmm. That could be more than a time loss. That's what I'm. It could be an us loss. <laughs> oh, he's turning it. All right. Oh, Sven. All right. All right. Sorry. Hopefully buddy. that doesn't come okay. back to eat you. Do I also get to <laughs> with the natural twenty? Oh. Hey! Oh. Yeah, one to twenty. <laughs> I did that earlier today. <laughs> so one plus nineteen. <laughs> So, Uver, as you're leading the pack and you're following these footprints, at one point you notice the footprints kind of go off to the side a little bit and you gesture for the rest of the group to stay there. Make sure you don't go out of eyesight while you follow them off a little ways to see where they're going off to and what they're doing. At one point, you are just about to lose your footing and there's like a hill that you're about to fall down. You're able to stabilize yourself on a tree when you notice down the hill there's large footprints that you immediately recognize as troll footprints and you are just from your vantage point that you weren't expecting to get because you're just stopping your fall there you feel like you can reconstruct the scene and whoever you've been following went down the hill to hold a conversation with trolls and then came back up to continue on their way oh I'm glad I got that net 20 mm-hmm. that's cool you get the sense that if you'd lost your balance and fell down the hill, you would have mussed up the tracks and would have been unable to reconstruct the scene. Gotcha. Okay, so they're meeting with trolls now? Yep. I mean, her, their job is to get reinforcements. This does ring a bell to the one of the books you read in the, the hidden library underneath the city that the Mad King Arid was, in one of the stories, had come from the Grungir Forest with an army of trolls. Oh, mm. ah, well, I don't remember that at all. Well, you weren't there, Val. That's uh, true. <laughs> that makes sense. Over, do we need to s- pack in for the night and think about this? Some? Yes, but not here. Um, you can see he's just kind of, he has this lost in thought look. The Eridsons seem to be trying to recreate what he did so many years ago. We may have to fight trolls. The Mad King used trolls? The Mad King did use trolls in one of the stories. 
Oh. He escaped, or he came out of the Grunkir forest with an army. Do you think Pilgrim knows anything about that? It's a little late for that. I think we're a little too far from him to ask. Yeah, oh, that's true. Maybe we can talk, maybe if we see him again later. To be honest, and some things are clicking in Uver's head, I hope Pilgrim knows nothing of this. But now I'm not so sure. Well, um, same thing as last time. Rope on a rock off the trail sleep? Yes. All right. Sounds good. We'll go for another 30 minutes. Okay. And then Val, who's just holding Neros in her two arms, kind of just tries to shake Neros a little bit to try and wake her up. It's like an earthquake. She doesn't want to, like, drop you. <laughs> She's like, hey, Neros. Hmm? Neros. Hmm? Neros. No. We're going to set up camp soon. What? Yeah, we're almost at camp. What do you mean, we're almost at the camp? What? You fell asleep with the flowers. They were starting to eat you. Uh, oh. We got you out. I, I thought I'd let you nap a little longer. Oh, thank you. Um. Okay. If we have time tonight, I think we should do the thing. Oh, that with, thing. With Corvus. Yeah. We'll try and figure that out. Yeah, yeah, probably. I, th- I think I'm all ready for it. Okay. You can probably put me down now. Oh, sure. <laughs> Just puts you down on your feet. For the audience, Sam just mimed his arms going from like a bridal carry <laughs> position to just turning vertical and then setting her down. <laughs> just prop her up. <laughs> also, Uber found some trolls talking to the Erids and some tracks. Oh, that does not sound good. No. How fresh are those tracks? About a day. So okay. We think we're getting close. We've traveled about a little over an hour, I think. You carried me for an hour oh yeah that's a long time how did you not get, how did your arms not get tired well one of them doesn't really get tired okay how did your arm i'm fairly strong <laughs> not get tired. i'm fairly strong oh a plus five modifier i think well, that's more than me <laughs> yeah i keep walking neros is like rubbing her eyes like a child <laughs> All right, and before too long, you find a good spot and you're able to set up camp much like you did the previous night with a rock and a rope to lead your way back to the trail. Although this time it's not so much the road that you're leading yourself back to, but the path of footprints that you've been following. Zephyr's tent is the first one up. As always. As a, I just I have to make sure you guys know. <laughs> As we're getting camp ready, and imagine Alward's cooking, Always. Okay. Always. He, he, it's not that he doesn't trust you guys to cook. It's that he feels more confident that he will enjoy his own cooking. You should not trust Nero's to cook. He doesn't trust Nero's to cook. <laughs> <laughs> um, through the whole trip, except for at the, um, the flowers and whatnot, Uver's obviously been, been tracking, but... He never lost that that look of being thinking about options, so to speak. He's been more quiet. He hasn't been talking with anybody. He seems more lost in thought than in general. Um, at camp, as we're milling around, Uver's going to be he'll sit down and he'll just look like he's fighting between one thing or another in his head and then finally he's going to get up and he's going to make his way over to Val Uh, she has got the big tome the bones land in a spiral open in front of her and she is like looks like she's taking notes and like running her finger over a bunch of stuff trying to make sure she's got words that she's pronouncing right do I recognize that tome it's a re- it's the religious text of Phrasma. Mm-hmm. Are you trained or better in religion? Yes, I'm trained. Yeah, so you'd be familiar with that as the holy text of Phrasma. It's not as straight up like, I follow Phrasma, this is my text. It's more of like an intense text for more study and religious uses. So it's a lot bigger, it has a lot more information, and it looks very, very old. And she's speaking Empyrean. I don't know... Wait, Imperium? Language of Celestials. Yeah, I don't know that one. Quite certain. Um, 
you just hear him actually just say um and then realize he's not quite certain how to uh start this conversation uh, once she like hears you there she very quickly closes the book and puts it down and she's like oh uh, hey you there how you doing um i'm well val uh, thank you for asking right. um good job leading us over here uh thank you you see him just trying to find words and he finally you just see him just this big sigh as he sits down um, not quite facing you but just, just adjacent giving you enough space I'm sorry I I, I don't know where to um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying um I think Val, in her mind, is, like, really hoping you don't find the words you want to say. I know you and I have been on the wrong foot, so to speak, for... I don't know if we've ever been on the right foot, but especially since the Troll Forge. Oh, um, I suppose so. It's all right, though, yeah? I don't think it is. The words you said back at the forge, I have thought a lot about them. And what my words did to you, I have regretted. Well, it's not like you knew or anything, you know? I haven't... I don't know if I've told you a lot of it, so... No, and you had... Especially... Now had no reason to. No reason to trust me. Well, you've done a lot of good things with the group. I trust you... In some ways. But in a lot of ways, you remind me too much of Jaime. You see him flinch... A little bit. Let's see that... That is... I don't like. Well, all he did was hide me away, control me, keep me away from what I needed to do and what I needed to be. And I probably jumped the gun a bit, but it was feeling that way back there. And I know it wasn't the same situation, but, you know, there are a lot of similar things I heard from you. I there's not much I can do with words to try and convince you that I don't feel that way and I feel I am probably less skilled than most in those words if recent experience is any indication if they do exist I believe that actions can be the best ways to show the truth of someone's character and intent. And that's why I am here now. I don't know too much about what has happened to you in the past your sorrows, your situations, and what happened to you to lose your arm. I do know about ghouls and what can happen. And I know what happened at Der de la Norm is not connected. She kind of stands up and fidgets and kind of paces a little bit. I'm not going to ask you to tell me if you don't wish. I'm just here to offer what help I can. It would help to know 
a little bit more. I will not deny that. But I'm not going to force your trust or your confidence. Maybe I'll tell you later, and it's easier. Um. I know of beings that have been around for untold ages. Perhaps I can ask on your behalf if they know anything. That could be nice. I'd put, I'd first put my faith in my gods over old people. No offense. <laughs> None taken. I would imagine that in your experiences, uh, you haven't experienced too much of the wisdom of ages. Well, the opposite, I guess. Whatever opposite of wisdom is. I've experienced a lot of pain and hurt and anger from ages. We're not all like that. Yeah. I know that. It's hard to accept it sometimes. Knowing with your mind and then knowing with your heart are two separate things. Of this I know. Anyway, my offer will stand for as long as I am here. Breathing. I will help you. If you wish. Just kind of nods understandingly. He takes that nod. He gets up. And he holds out his hand. Not in a handshake, shoulder away. But uh, like palm up. She kind of looks at it. I guess appreciates the gesture. Gesture? But she doesn't reach out. She still looks kind of nervous and scared. As you don't reach out, one, he doesn't look offended. You just see on his face when he, when he sees that fear and nervousness. Just a profound sadness like you could just see it all through just that he a heavy sadness and you just hear so much pain so much fear for one so young this is not right this should not have happened and I'm sorry Val I am so sorry that you had to feel that. That you feel that. And he takes his hand down and walks away as if there's a big burden on his shoulders. Val, now feeling guiltier and more frustrated with herself, she kind of rushes over to like a water bowl to kind of look at her reflection quickly kind of washes off some of the feathers so she can see her family tattoo and she's just tonight tonight we'll fix some stuff and that's where we'll end this episode all right, and the hero point for this episode goes to Sam, both for his involvement in that cool role play scene at the end of the episode, but also in uh, basically just letting Zephyr skip right past the field Ooh. of enchanted flowers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Cornelius. And Cornelius. Nobody cares about him, just me. Who knows if Cornelius <laughs> ever sleeps? <laughs> I do. I've seen him sleep. It's a good movie title. Cornelius never sleeps. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. That's great. This was exciting. I'm going to go process some stuff. <laughs> and we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye. This has been an Atomic Broadcasting production. Pathfinder, Galarian, and the Lost Omens world setting are copyright of Paizo. More information at paizo.com. 
Music in the show is from Monument Studios' collection, as well as assorted artists with some original tracks composed by Jordy Hake. More details in the description. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to share with a friend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. You gave me my least favorite <laughs> character. Colors. Story. My favorite fact. <laughs> my least favorite. My fav- and that's not a fact, but my favorite like consequence of just like doing things is if you paint a wall enough, it will get thicker over time, and you'll make the room slightly smaller every time. Yep. Until eventually you suffocate. <laughs> if you paint a newly drywalled wall without priming it, it's really fun to peel off. Mm. The reason why I think about that is because in the movie Fifty First Dates, they repaint over one of the main the female main leads wall every day they don't scrape it off they take a picture and then they repaint it with primer so she could paint over it again and they've done this for like six years and i just i i how thick is that wall now how many times do they do it in a year every day 365 jenkins wow. the room would be about four and a half inches narrower on every wall Am- that is amazing. <laughs> I need to be a few inches. Thank you for that. Is I have racked my brain on that for so long. Well, you just got to find the average thickness of a layer of paint. It's a I just didn't want to do that. of an inch. Oh, my.